Hi, Gaia. Hi, Matt. So you wanted to do laws, actually. Yeah, laws. So the ticker is L-O-W, right? Yeah. So they are, uh, of course, a very big hardware and home improvement chain uh, in the US and Canada. Yes, and I see that they are trading at $182 per share. Market cap is around $100 billion. They have 30, almost $30 billion in total debt and $4 billion in cash. Return on total yeah. capital of 40%. What's your, what's your take on this uh, debt versus cash? Yeah, honestly, I, I don't like it. Yeah, but, to me, it's yeah. always a little bit worrisome in a way when I see this. So one thing that is good is that the component of the debt that is due in five years is only 4.6 billion. Okay, so they, they will have okay. time to so, pay this. But, you know, it's always good to have a bit, a, yeah, a yeah. slightly better distribution. I, I agree with you. But then on the other side, the return total capital is amazing, like averaging 40% in the last five to 10 years is just impressive. Um, their stock price has been growing. Uh, you can see very clearly even on this logarithm chart, the March 2020 mm. short crisis. And of course, year to date, uh, they've just been going down as um, basically the market, the entire market. But uh, mm. regarding the fundamentals from value line in green, we see that in the last uh, five to 10 years, they've been growing earnings at 20% annually, cash flow at 15%, revenues at 12%. And they also have slightly inflated multiples, but not the crazy multiples that you can see in many different stocks nowadays. Like for example, a PE yeah. ratio of 20 is a bit high, but not 30 or 40, as we have seen in other um, cases. And I see here that yeah. you are forecasting growth in double digits at 12%. For earnings, cash flow, and revenue, with more sustainable multiples. So, for example, the price to revenue will be one, the price to earnings will be 16, and all in all, this gives us a CAGR of around 10, 11 percent. And then I see that they also been paying a dividend, that they've been growing it at 19 percent in the last 10 years. The current dividend yield is 1.7 percent, and this will bring us to a dividend yield of 1.9 percent bringing the total CAGR to around 12%. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like these numbers, uh, also the fact that the multiples are not inflated. I'm only a little bit scared about their yeah. debt. Yes, I mean, they, they have almost enough cash to pay down all the debt that is due in the next few years. So this is good. But on, on the other hand, yes, 30 billion in, uh, in debt uh, for uh, 100 uh, billion dollar companies is a lot. So what, what are they using this um, debt for? I mean, are they trying to expand more? Are they trying to build more? Uh, mm. Uh, mm. You know, do they have warehouses or do they have uh, more offices? Maybe they're trying to expand more, like when you are so leveraged. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe they just, you know, used the last few years of extremely low interest rates. Uh, to load up on on, on it. <laughs> yeah. If you think about it, only 5 billion, 4.6 billion are due in the next five years. And so 24 are due beyond five years. Think about it. I mean, essentially, they could borrow so much for, uh, it, for a It's long very time. inviting. I mean, it, it's not inviting for me yeah. as a person. Like, I would never live on so much debt but right. i understand as at times like a company can be you yeah. know willing to do this if they're expanding right it's so cheap to borrow money that yeah you say why not mm -hmm. but okay so we have a care of 12 percent, and then i see that you also have the dividend model right yes so Lowe's is a dividend champion they increased their dividend or or d didn't cut so increased or, or stable for 60 years, six zero. <laughs> so I, I would, I would uh, regard it as um, a stable dividend growth company. Crazy. Uh, so yeah, crazy, crazy. And um, the, in this case, the dividend model is um, kind of reliable, I think. And it gives us um, it gives us uh, about uh, the same result as as the multiples model. Yeah, very nice. I mean, with these uh, dividend champions or aristocrats, right? I mean, this is very 
Very yeah. nice, usually. Yeah. Um, and what about the DCF? Do they have also stable cash flow? So yes, they increased cash flow every year since the global financial crisis. So very stable, steady. I would regard it as yeah, quite quite reliable in terms of uh, of cash flow. So this is probably because you know they they have so many stores uh, about. 2000 stores and uh, and uh, they can diversify quite quite a bit but in any case so um in 2021 of course we know you know all uh, p- people were stuck at home and were uh, improving uh, homes so uh, their cash flow went up 40% uh, but uh, in general uh, up to 2020 let's say that in uh, 8 years uh, it went up for X. So quite good and extremely stable. So I used quite a, a conservative assumption and uh, I used $10 uh, a share uh, for the free cash flow. So I think that this is, this is quite, quite a good starting point. And I assume as usual I, I i assume a slowdown i don't see it coming but you know maybe there's a recession coming or of course they they are slightly cyclical so yeah sure i i start yeah i start with 13 percent i slow it down to four and um the the dcf gives us eight eight percent kager so a bit so th- more th- conservative this is a little... than the others right Yes, yes. It's because I, I am essentially, I'm starting with a free cash flow that is maybe, you know, sl- slightly conservative and, and also a growth that, that is quite conservative. So the combination of the two gives us, uh, yeah. But so what's your conclusion on this? Because I see from one side that this has been uh, such a stable company uh, both in mm, terms of mm. cash flow and kind of consequently in terms of dividends, yeah. right? Increasing it for 60 years, um, being so reliable um, in, in a way. So it yeah. invites, in a way, investors and dividend growth investors. Um, on the other side, um, we have a debt that maybe is a bit too high from what we think mm. we like. It might be not very high for other kind of investors so this can also be a rather subjective maybe side of investing and then the kager that we get from these models are actually pretty good because we get kagers from eight to let's say around 13 percent multiples are not so inflated so yeah what's your what's your final take on a company like lowe's i so my, my take is this is an extremely stable company it is exposed to the economy as a whole, so it's, it, it is cyclical. The multiples are quite good as of now, but if we go in a recession, they are probably going to, uh, to suffer more. But from the point of view of the dividend and the future growth, they're extremely good. So I... I would wait a little bit. So you want to uh, buy lows I, at its lows. <laughs> at its lows, exactly. Uh, but when when the time when the time comes, I I would not hesitate to 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 get it. Okay, um, well, great. Thanks as as usual, guy. So I think we'll wait on this. That's the take. Yeah. Cool. A little bit. Thank you. Thank you, man. See you. See you soon. Bye.